Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marco Lali, and I'm the head of sales for IOXA Biosystems here in the United States. I'd like to welcome you all to the first Lunaris webinar of 2021. We'd like to thank each of you for taking the time out of your schedules in order to attend. We hope you'll find the presentation both informative and relatable to the essential work you all do on a daily basis. To introduce you to our technology, our speaker today is our in-house expert and field application scientist, Dr. Alex Corral. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the controls over to him so we can get started. One last thing as a housekeeping note, uh, we'll have time at the end of the presentation to address any questions and answers you guys may have. So if you can hold your questions until then or utilize the chat function, we would greatly appreciate it. Alex, it's all yours. Thank you, Marco. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Corrali. I'm the field application scientist here at AOXA for the United States. And today is just going to be a brief introduction to our multi-platform, multiplex protein analysis platform, Lunaris. Um, before we begin, I just want to start by briefly mentioning biomarkers signatures and the immune response. So for biomarker signatures and how they can provide a snapshot of the immune response and help identify underlying mechanisms involved in disease progression. For example, patients undergoing CAR T cell therapy can experience cytokine, cytokine release syndrome or cytokine storm after initial treatment. By identifying and monitoring specific biomarkers involved in the onset of cytokine release syndrome, patients can be monitored daily with in-office visits rather than time spending in ICU or at bedside. Other examples include inflammatory conditions of the skin and joint, such as atopic dermatitis, and identifying pro-inflammatory cytokines for treatments like IL-17, um, identifying biomarkers within the synovial joint fluid for rheumatoid arthritis, uh, even looking at and, and analyzing different cytokines and chemokines involved in liver fibrosis for chronic liver diseases. And finally, with the current state of today, uh, looking at immune response uh, to COVID-19. Biomarker identification analysis go hand in hand with translational research, and Lunaris delivers just that. So, Lunaris is a multiplex protein analysis platform. For those that don't know, multiplexing is a tool that allows users to identify and quantitate multiple biomarkers or analytes um, of interest at one time rather than performing individual experiments or assays. Essentially, you are running multiple sandwich elizas in one well. Uh, Lunaris is applicable for a variety of matrices, uh, your clinical relevant sample types such as serum or cell culture supernatant, plasma, as well as we have kits for ophthalmology, uh, ocular fluids, uh, vitreous or aqueous humor. Uh, currently, our kits can detect secreted markers consisting of cytokines, chemokines, and both growth and complement factors. More specifically, Lunaris operates on a plan planar bead-based detection system for multiplexing. The first image on your left is a photo of our biochip that is our heart and soul of our technology. The biochips come in a 96-well format and, quanti and can quantify up to 12 analytes in parallel, depending on which kit you choose. In each well, uh, there are approximately 10,000 micro cavities, as shown in this middle image, um, that houses our proprietary beads. Performance-wise, the sensitivity is as low as one picogram per milliliter with a dynamic range of three to four logs. What sets us apart from our competitors is the low value needed. We only require as little as three microliters uh, of sample per well. Uh, we also offer a flexible format with our biochips, uh, which you can read either at 96 wells up to 384 wells on a single plate, depending on your needs. In-house, our production team manufactures each biochip through a sequential deposition process. Imagine this image here 
is just one well, and we are going to prepare a sixplex assay with the following analytes, IL-1 beta, IL-2, et cetera. For the first round, we'll deposit IL-1 beta. Once deposition is complete, a photo is taken, capturing the coordinates where these beads are housed. Then we will apply our second round of beads, in this case, IL-2, followed by a photo, and repeat this process until we finish each of the six analytes. Once the deposition is completed, a final photo is taken, and these bead coordinates are then stored on a chip-specific data file, which is included in your kit. <clears throat> so every kit or every well is specific and unique um, for each kit. Now, the platform consists of three components. Our kits, which can detect biomarkers, again, using as little as three microliters among different uh, various matrices. Our reader, which is a dedicated benchtop device about the size of a laser printer, and our software, which is a user-friendly um, data analysis software, which we'll get into here shortly. Our main targets of applications for translational research fall under the, the current three categories. Inflammation, we know how inflammation plays a big part in disease initiation and progression, and we can help facilitate your research needs in the inflammatory world for both human and mouse samples. Immuno-oncology, where we have developed collaborations in the areas of um, immune response. And finally, where our technology started, ophthalmology. Our dedicated team of scientists have developed several protocols in handling and obtaining precious ocular fluids, for analysis and in combination with our low volume requirement, we have opened the door in aiding for biomarker detection and identification um, in the field of ophthalmology. Here at AOXA, we have engaged with several commercial partners in the following eight fields as well. Um, and you will find our kits are uh, in each one of these applications for your research needs. Going a little bit into detail, now for our kits, they are ready to use. Uh, here is, as you see in this photo, you receive everything needed. The only supplies needed on your end would be some everyday lab consumables, such as your centrifuge tubes, um, pipettes, pipette tips. Uh, we do recommend users have access or have a plate centrifuge, um, as well as a multi-channel pipette. Uh, this is a snapshot photo of our kit portfolio, which I won't go too much into detail, uh, but we offer currently over 100 analytes for both human and mouse samples, and we are designing more kits uh, in our pipeline for a 2021 release. Uh, if you'd like, please feel free to visit our website for more information uh, under the products and service tabs on our website. And you'll find a list as long as a list of all our kits we offer, as well as the corresponding analytes. Now, for our reader, it comes in two formats: a 96 well format, as well as a 384 well format. Um, it's benchtop device with again, that's a small footprint with a plug-and-play format. Uh, just load your chip and press run. Um, in addition. There's no liquid handling, no calibration needed, and no scheduled maintenance required for the Lunaris reader. Readouts typically take less than 10 minutes for a 96 weld chip, and our platform also allows real-time monitoring results. Uh, this photo you see here, uh, you will see an image for both bright fields and fluorescent images. Uh, as well as a status bar for your uh, your run. Uh, and kind of looking a little bit closer, if we magnify those bright field and fluorescent images, uh, you could see the micro cavities on the left during this bright field uh, image. And where the beads are housed are these darker images. 
And then if we look over at our fluorescent image, you will see the corresponding beat uh, where we can measure the signal intensity for each analyte. Uh, and then the final component of our platform is the Lunaris analysis software. Uh, this software is very intuitive and easy to use. Most importantly, data evaluation is transparent and you have the option to export all data to either a PDF file or an Excel sheet for further analysis or statistical analysis using a third party software. <clears throat> what you see here are just a few screenshots of the LA software in use, uh, which we have come across. Uh, the first image under experimental planning, uh, this is similar to other programs where basically you will be just designating each well type um, to which type of sample you have, uh, standard, blanks, controls, etc. Afterwards, uh, you will upload your experimental definition, which was created just now with under the plan, as well as the bead coordinates that was on those USB flash drive. And <clears throat> from here, uh, and you also have your run file, sorry, I kind of confused the two, um, but the first image that you will be greeted with is a standard curve for your first analyte. Um, and we have different display options for each analyte. Uh, you can either look at it under the standard curve, um, we give you options to look at different types of heat maps, either looking at mean fluorescent intensity or concentration. And we also have built-in options for quick results for bar graphs or box plots, et cetera. Overall, the Lunaris system allows the user to achieve more from less. Whether using just as little as three microliters of samples our technology is robust and re reproducible, and we offer a wide selection of kits for your research needs. <clears throat> for our next section of the webinar, I just want to go over a few scenarios where our customers are using the Lunaris technology uh, to aid their research interest in different fields. So for this first one, one of the most unique capabilities of our system is the ability to perform cytokine kinetics on a single mouse. For this study, wild type and knockout mice were infected with a specific bacterium and blood drops were taken at six different time points within 24 hours. Serum samples were collected, prepared, and analyzed using our Lunaris Mouse 12plex cytokine kit. If we take a look at the results, on the left, we have pooled serum samples for GMCSF on the top and IL-13 on the bottom. Uh, and if we take a closer look, we can see that there's a large variability in the standard deviation at some time points. Uh, here at 16 hours for GMCSF and 24 hours for IL-13. With Lunaris, because such a small sample size is needed, we can actually analyze individual mice instead of pooling samples to achieve that uh, concentration you might need for other assays. And here we also have the ability to um, identify inner animal variability throughout the samples uh, and pinpoint which animals are responsible for the increase in standard deviation, et cetera, or which are maybe or may not be responding to treatment depending on your research. So with this capability of cytokine kinetic profiling um, using single animal, you too can champion the three R's in your lab. Um, by replacing unwanted experimental procedures to gain a deeper insight with using our low volume requirement, reducing the number of animals needed to decrease inner animal variability and refining to gain more information using fewer animals in accordance with your institution's animal care and use committee. Our next case, we'll be looking at cytokine release syndrome. Um, and we, as I said in the first slide, uh, profiling biomarker signature 
has become an important tool for the assessment of many therapeutic interventions, as well as an overall understanding of disease phenotype. And we are working with leading clinical research institutes to help gain a better understanding of cytokine release syndrome. In this case, a researcher out of Harvard Medical School or Medical School aimed to do a risk assessment for immune reconstitution after cord blood transplantation or graft versus host disease. 27 patients were included in the initial study and blood draws were performed prior as up to prior and up to 24 months after treatment. Serum samples were then collected and measured using our Lunaris Human 11 Plex cytokine kit. In addition, cell fractions were prepared for correlation analysis. <clears throat> and we can see here at two months on this heat map, there is a correlation of cytokine concentration in serum and cell counts of different white blood subtypes that showed a distinctive biomarker signature two months after treatment. These results have actually led to a follow-up multi-center study with over 300 patients to evaluate early treatment options for graft first host disease, which is now being currently conducted. Um, and this actually he is, leads us to this next part with COVID-19 and how everything is in the news today. Um, here at AOXA, we are also doing our part in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, we are committed to supporting the global community with our state-of-the-art technology for identifying biomarker signatures in severe cases of COVID-19 and hopefully can help reveal patterns of COVID uh, disease progression and for the diagnostic and therapeutic avenues. And then for our last case today, um, again, where our field started, where our technology started all in, is in the ophthalmology field. Knowing that ocular fluids are scarce and precious, our team has developed several protocols for researchers to obtain these fluids and identify biomarkers that play a major role in ocular diseases, such as age-related macular degeneration, proliferative diabetic renopathy, as well as diabetic macular edema. Um, and to your right, you see that these are some of the kits that are available uh, with their corresponding analytes. Now, in this slide, researchers analyzed the vitreous humor of patients who were diagnosed with diabetic renopathy, uh, labeled here as DR, patients that were diabetic that had no evidence of rhinopathy, they would be labeled no DR, and non-diabetic patients as a control. And you can clearly see patients with the diabetic rhinopathy in the diabetic rhinopathy group experience significant increase in IL-6, IL-8, and VEGF levels. And it's also to, important to note once these patients receive treatment, each of the three analytes return to base levels, um, baseline level comparable to those of the non-diabetics non or non-diabetic renopathy patients and non-diabetics. Um, so just to summarize, as we wrap up today's presentation, before we answer any questions that anyone may have, our streamlined multiplex assay platform can help enable your translational research needs in just three simple steps. Our assays, which are ready to use kits with about 100 analytes in the areas of inflammation, immuno-oncology, and ophthalmology, and perhaps more in the pipeline. Our reader, a dedicated benchtop device that requires no liquid handling or scheduled maintenance and our analysis software for easy data acquisition and transparent data evaluation. <clears throat> and before I take questions, I would like to encourage you to take a look at our website for more information on our technology and available kits. And while you're there, 
You can search available publications on where our technology is being used today. We have data sheets uh, that go in more detail about the principles and applications of Lunaris. Um, also, you will find application notes where we regularly update protocols or methods for use of different matrices, um, where we help out our customers or colleagues that reached out to us. Um, for example, we recently just published a detailed protocol for analyzing cytokines in human tears. And this will be available to you off our website as well. Uh, with that, I will start taking questions. And if you do have questions at a later time, you are more than happy to uh, email us at sales at aoxa.com. And with that, let's answer some questions. We have a couple questions in the chat function that we can um, we can start going through. Uh, one of the questions we had here was, can we run plasma samples on our on our system? Uh, yes, we have um, recently validated all plasma samples to be uh, run for each of our kits. So yes. Okay. Um, also, what is the minimum and maximum plex we can run? Well, there's really uh, no minimum or, or maximum, but what we currently have available is a threeplex uh, for minimum uh, up to a 12plex. Um, and that's what you will find on our website if you do hit one, if you take, if you look, but yeah, up three from 12. Okay. Uh, also, uh, how long does it take to run the assay uh, start to finish? Uh, it takes about one working day. Um, it's, I would say usually it takes about six hours with hands-on approach about three hours. We have several incubation times. Um, so you do have time to do other things. Um, we also offer in our protocols or manual different areas in case you do have to stop where you can actually pause the experiment and go and resume the following day. So it, I would say approximately six to eight hours. Okay. And the last one we have here is, uh, let me see here. Uh, do we have to remove debris from samples by centrifugation um, before analysis? Um, yes. Um, well, <clears throat> the first part of the protocol is when you have your matrices, so let's just say that the cell culture is supernatant, uh, you would want to spin the samples at 700 G for a minute, and then we would take the fluid off top. Um, this way that it doesn't bind, but there are going to be several uh, wash steps in between. Um, so the debris shouldn't be too much of a factor um, when uh, plating your samples. Okay, uh, is MCP1 one cytokine target? I believe MCP1 is a target. I would actually have to go back and look. Um, I need to double check. Yeah, let me get back to you. Um, I have the question here and I will email that person um, with the target. So that was, uh, Darla, Darla, if you can send us your email address or put it on the chat function, I will gladly send you the information as a follow-up. Uh, also, obviously you know, relatable to what's going on these days, how can we use our products for COVID-19 research? Um, so <clears throat> again, one of the things with uh, COVID-19 is cytokine release syndrome, and we offer many inflammatory uh, cytokines in our kits, uh, so we can actually help monitor the uh, anything from cytokine release syndrome, detecting biomarkers involved in COVID, um, et cetera. So we actually, on our website, have um, <clears throat> a more detailed analysis, as well as a special going on for uh, COVID-19.
Okay. I think that's all we got as far as questions. If there's anything else, please feel free to jump in. All right. All right, everyone. Well, we'd like to thank you very much for attending our uh, webinar today. We hope you guys found it uh, enjoyable. And uh, should there be any other additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can um, you can fill out a contact card on our webpage, and uh, one of us will get in touch with you as soon as we uh, we get it. Other than that, we hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day uh, and have a great weekend that's coming up. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.